The title is Jesus is the best friend ever. The best friend ever. Wow. You got to think about that. We have had friends before. I've had many friends. But Jesus is the best friend ever. The best friend ever. I'm going to go ahead and read Mark chapter 2 verses 15 through 17. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at me in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many. And they followed him. And when the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? Hear that, Zeke and Zach? How do you do, do that? Why is he eating with, and drinking with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. See, we got to understand something. Sometimes people only want to hang out with people who can, like, elevate their status. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Come on. They can elevate their status. They don't want to hang out with the one that look like he's the reject. The one that look like He's having problems because that means that now he's going to probably, if you're a guy when I was growing up, man, I want to hang out with somebody who might be cool because they might bring more girls over my way too. You know what I mean? I want to hang out with guys that look like they're about something so whenever guys see me walking down the block, they think I'm something. But I'm hanging out with this guy who looks like a reject, who nobody wants, that's going to cramp my style a little bit. That may bring my status down. That didn't mean that didn't matter to Jesus. He didn't come for those who were way up there. Right? He came for those who really, really looked like they needed the help. He came for the ones that nobody wanted. That's who he was. So when others were ashamed, Jesus wasn't ashamed. When others walk around and they look at you because you don't have the, the latest fashion on. And they're, and they're like shying away from you all that you're, yeah, I, I kind of, I know him a little bit. Yeah, I would say we're friends, you know. I know him, you know. But Jesus, on the other hand, he's not going to shy away from us. He's not going to be ashamed of us. He wants us. He wants us. Not because what we can do for his rep. It's about what he can do for us. Jesus is the best friend ever. Best friend ever. St. John's chapter 14, verses 12 through 13. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works. Now what friend do you know? A lot of times people want to be your friend as long as you, pump, as long as you lift them up a little bit. Make them feel good feel good inside. What are you going to talk about? You're going to be better. What? You're talking about you're going to be better than me? You're going to, you think you're better than me? But see, Jesus had not have any problem with that. He said that we're going to do greater works than he. He had no problem with us, uh, with our greatness or with wanting us to be great. That's a great friend right there. That's the best friend to where they don't mind you being great. But, oh, no, you could be their friend as long as they're better than you. Long as they're better than you. Long as you're lower than them. Long as you're helping to elevate your status. Then you could be their friend. But no, 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 no. We can't be better than me. You could be below me. You could be, you could be almost as good as me. Because I don't want to hang out with losers now. You could almost be as good as me, but you can't be better than me. You can't even be equal with me, but almost, you know, I'm here. You can be about there. <laughs> right? But Jesus had no problem with that. Let's just go back and read that again, that latter part. The works that I do 
shall ye, shall he do also, shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do. That's what he said. He didn't have any problem with us being great. He didn't have his problem, any problem with us doing great things. That's a great friend right there. And not only that, but going to help us to achieve it. Because we can only do the greatness through him. Going to help us to achieve it. A lot of times people don't want to show you their secrets that allow you to be greater than they are. They might show you something, but I can't give it all to you. I can't give you all my secrets now. I can't give you the secret sauce. I might tell you something else, a couple of other things, how to make something. But I can't give you the secret sauce, because that means the church is going to be as good as mine or better. He has no problems with showing us how to be great and be great. Because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. See, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we think we got some friends until we ask something of them. <laughs> right? Until, until it's time for them to do something for us. We may think we got some friends. Then all of a sudden, they got excuses for why they can't do what we need them to do. Why they can't loan us what we need them to loan us. You're our friends as long as we don't ask them for anything. And as long as we're doing for them. But whenever we have to ask them to do something, we're inconveniencing them. We're imposing upon them. They don't have time for us. That's why I see like that everybody want to be your friend when you're on top. But when you hit low, Sometimes they want to kick you while you're down sometimes. Throw salt on your wound. But Jesus is the best friend ever. Because that's not what he's about. He, he tells us to ask. He tells us to ask. And not only just for us to ask, but let us know that he's going to give it to us. What's up you ask in my day? we got to understand that's the kind of friend we have in Jesus. Here's a song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That's the, kind of, that's the kind of friend we have in him. And just think, we go out there and esteem all these other people. And we hang on there every word. And we're trying to go around impressing them. And they're not half the friend of Jesus. Either. They're not even half the friend. They're not even half. But that's the kind of friend we have. He wants us to ask. He wants us to, to come to him. Oh, you can come to me. You have not because you asked not. Why didn't you ask me? You have not because you asked not. You didn't ask me. You should have came to me and asked me. Jesus is that kind of friend. Turn to Matthew 15, chapter 15, verses 2 through 11. Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. See, in other words, looking down on them. They eat with dirty hands. What's wrong with that? They eat with dirty hands. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus say, such have ye had, thus have ye made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Esaias prophesy of you saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. The commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. There's some things that can be said in regards to that. What he said that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. But before we get to that, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. But before we get to that, just look at Jesus one more time. Look at him. Jesus is a good friend. He didn't side with the in crowd. He didn't say, oh, no, man, they're over there. They're slobs. They're barbarians. Check them out over there. They need to be washing their hands. Or feel all embarrassed and like, oh, <laughs> I know, I know. I know they should wash their hands. He didn't do that. He didn't side with them like that. Jesus didn't side with the in crowd. Jesus didn't, see, Jesus don't care about petty things that some other people might care about. He don't care about that. He wasn't caring about they didn't eat with their, with washed hands. He's caring what cometh out of their mouth, more or less. That's what he's caring about. See, they're caring about things that don't matter. And they get petty. And, they, and man separates. Oh, they, they don't wash their hands, so we're not going to go over there by them. They over there, they, don't, they didn't comb their hair today, so we're not going to do this. He doesn't get caught up in them petty things. We know there's people out there that keep themselves pressed. They used to use the same fried, dyed, and laid to the side, meaning they're here, have it all pressed out. Right? There's people out there that looks nice, man. Got themselves all nicely dressed, well-groomed, and inside, they, they're so rotten on the inside. They're so rotten on the inside. Jesus is saying, it's not so much what the outside that matters. You know, it's not about the outside. It's not so much what they're eating with dirty hands. It's what's coming out of their mouth with what matters. So sometimes people get caught up in the wrong things. But see, Jesus didn't side with them. He didn't go snicker and kind of shrink and say, oh man, <laughs> yeah, I know. He let them know. He's a good friend. He's the best friend ever. He don't leave us like that. Yeah, we might not be washing our hands. We may be barbarian like, but he knows what's going on inside here. He knows we have that heart that we want to follow him. So we got to understand, this is who we serve. So it's not about that, did you wear something outdated? Did you do something that Man looks on the outward and frowns upon. It's, he's, he's looking at what counts. He's not looking at them petty things. That's what matters. And so we got, he's the best friend ever. And that's what he's talking about right there. So we got to make sure that we're doing. So the other thing that I want to talk to you about with this portion of scripture is we got to make sure that we're doing the right things. Why did it say what cometh out of the man with the follow them? Because that's what's truly in his heart. What somebody says and comes out of them, they must be feeling that some way. Even if they say, oh, I didn't mean to say it, it's what they felt. They felt that way still. They might not have meant to, they might not have meant to say it, but that's how they felt. So it's what's coming out of the man which defiles the man. Jesus is the best friend ever. Proverbs 18 and 24. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. That makes sense. You can't be going around snarling at people and thinking, oh, why am I sitting over here all by myself? You can't do that. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. We know who that is. That's Jesus. There's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So we know that Jesus showed himself friendly. Jesus, we know that. He stood up for it. He didn't just say, oh yeah, I know they should have washed their hands. He said, hey, there's more important things to be concerned about than they didn't wash their hands. 
Wouldn't you like to have a friend to stick up for you like that? Say, oh, I, I, I know, I, I know. Or you're like, <laughs> you kind of laugh it off and that, that, that nervous laughter and kind of go on about. Say, no, you're focusing on they didn't wash their hands, man. Really? Don't you know there's more important things? That's why I'm hanging out with these dudes. These dudes are, they, 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 they're, ready, they're ready to go ahead and do whatever it takes to get the job done. And you're over here worrying about washing your hands. When you want to hang out with somebody like that who's got your back, who's not going to kind of kind of shrink when somebody comes with them because they're afraid to stand up for you. But you say, hey, listen, what are you talking about, man? What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? When you want to have a friend like that, come on, if you want to have a friend like that, let me hear somebody say amen or something. Amen. If you want a friend like that, I know I don't want no friend when somebody's talking about me. I have friends like that. To where somebody say, oh man, you know, and you're like, you know, although they might not have agreed or, or said anything, but they kind of like smiled and like, no, you know. And then they didn't feel good about it, but they didn't say, oh man, they ain't all like that. He's, he's a good dude. What are you talking about? You know, that's because you don't know him. That's all. You know, he's a good dude. You know, this, but see, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't just go in his heart and say, oh man, I know you're good guys, but I'm not going to be Yeah, I'm going to say No, he stood up. He let them know there's more important things out there. He's the best friend ever. He stand, and he stands up for us. He stands up for us. Yes, he does. Because here we go. We go to Psalms 27, verse 10. When my mother, when my father and mother forsake me. Now that's kind of bad. But we do know that people's mothers and fathers do forsake them. But that's bad, though. It is bad. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. You understand me? That's the kind of friend that we have. He's the best friend ever. He's going to be there. When everybody, when everybody else has failed you, whenever that person over there who you thought was a sure thing, and, you, and I don't know how much sure you could think you could have than a father and a mother. But when that person right there, and they fail you, when everybody else goes around, they fail you, and he's there to take you up. Best friend ever. Best friend ever. We need to honor him. We need to love him. We need to worship him. So what I want you all to do, I want mean, let's stand up on our feet and let's give him some praise. Let's stand up on our feet. Sometimes I kind of get a little hard headed and I press through anyway. Then when they say, oh, you know, you got families going to have to stay back here. You can't be all beyond this point right here. But see, there's times whenever you can't do that. So, but Jesus has no barriers. They can't kick him out. They can't keep him out. So when father and mothers can't be there, he can be there. Father and mothers can't be everywhere all the time. But he can be there. You understand? He can be there. He, because he's that kind of friend. St. John's 15, verses 13 through 15. See now, see now. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's, a, he's just so phenomenal. When you read, and you think about how great he is. Greater love have no man than this, 
that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love have no man than this, that he, a man lay down his life for his friend. I'm going to pause right there. See, that's, they, consider, they consider that the ultimate sacrifice. When you give your life because there's no more you can give. You understand? I mean, there's nothing else to give. They call that the ultimate sacrifice. So he gave the ultimate sacrifice. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. Now get this. Jesus gave his life, right? And we know there's so-called friends that people have. So-called friends that will sell you out to save their own life. Right? They will sell you out so that they can live. Oh, you know what? You better give them up right now or I'm going to kill you. Okay, he's down the road. They'll sell you out to save their own life. They'll sell you out so they don't have to do as much time in jail. Or they don't have to do no time. But see, he said, greater love have no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. Understand? That's the kind of friend that we have in Jesus. That's the kind of friend that we have. That he gave the ultimate sacrifice. When other people are trying to do self-preservation, trying to keep their own life, and they'll give you up, who are supposed to be their friend, to save their own self. But he gave his life for us. That's the kind of friend we have. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you no, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knows not what his Lord doeth. But I call you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Right, we know that everybody don't make known unto us everything. You know, if you work somewhere, you know that the higher ups aren't telling you everything. They're telling you some things to make you think that you're in the loop, that you have an understanding. But they're not telling you everything. You think you know everything that's going on in that company? You think you know everything? Do you think you know everything that's going on in your friends' lives? I can guarantee you not. That most disgusting, humiliated thing that they've done. You don't know that. Right? You don't know everything. But he's not leaving anything out from us. He said, that's why he said, we know. He reveals it to us. For the servant knows not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Best friend ever. Best friend ever. And we got to be best friends with him. We can't sell him out. We can't sell him out and say, oh, man, they're not down. Oh, they're, they're, you know what? They make fun of my Lord. They don't hang out with my Lord. They're shunning him. So I better put him away right now. Say, I can't hang out with you right now. I can't hang out with you. I can't hang out with you, Jesus, because these over here, they don't believe in me. They don't believe in me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to uh, put you over here for right now. I'm going to have to put you over here. But when he stands up for us and says, you know what? So what? They ain't washed their hands. So what? They didn't do that. So, you know, you know what? Your, mother, your father and mother forsook you? Come on. And we put him over there and say, oh, they don't believe in him, so I'm not going to be friends with him right now. I'm not going to show him out openly right now. I'm not going to do that right now. So not only is he a best friend to us, but we got to be best friends to him. We got to make sure that we're his best friend, that we're doing the things that we should be doing. We're not ashamed of him. Just like he spoke up for his disciples and how he speaks up for us, we got to speak up for him. Say, nah, nah, ain't like that. Nah, come on. That's because you don't know him. <laughs> if you would only know, if you only knew what I knew and what I know, if you only know what I know, you would be talking the way you're talking. That's because you don't know We gotta stand up for him the same way. Especially whenever it's being directed at us. Amen. Right? Whenever somebody's gonna talk negative to you about you in front of the Lord, saying all right, come. That's because you don't know. You're talking about something you don't know about. That's why you talk like that.
Alright. St. John's 11, verse 11. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. You see what he said? He didn't say, My servant Lazarus, Lazarus sleepeth. Right? He said, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. See now, see we gotta understand. We gotta understand, if he was just Lord over us, which he is, he is Lord over us, but if he was if he was just that, it would be like this in the next in the next outline. St. John's 11, 35 through 36. Jesus wept. Why is he gonna weep? Except he cares and he feels. Amen. Why is he going to weep? Because he don't just look at us as just mere servants. He said that in his birth. He looked at us as friends. So he wept. His friend had died and he's wept. And even though he has the power to raise him back up. But it's, I guess he, he, like you said, he walked around with the, with the feelings of a man. He was God in the flesh but walked around with feelings. No wonder why he says in, in Hebrews 4, 10, 4 and 15, and we should all know this, so if you want to say it with me, you know, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. You understand me? He knows. He went through. He had emotions. So even though he knows he has the power, and he's going there to bring, he's going there to bring him up. He's going there to rise him up. It still had an effect on him. He still felt that way because he had feelings of a man. And he said, our friend Lazarus. You understand me? Our friend Lazarus. So Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. Talking about behold how Jesus loved Lazarus. You understand me? He's uh, the best friend ever. He's the best friend ever. Because he's a friend that can never let you down. Because he has all power and all authority. 